Welcome on this second Sunday of Advent. We begin as we do each Sunday in Advent with the lighting of the Advent wreath. You are invited to create and light along with us your own Advent wreath at home. Today we light the second candle, the candle of peace. We are people who speak peace. We know that God has told us to turn our weapons of war into instruments that will benefit all humanity. Into the, in the name of a child who was born long ago to become the Prince of Peace, we now light a candle of peace. Come to us, O God of peace, meet us this Advent, and awaken us to you. Amen. First reading for this second Sunday in Advent comes to us from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended, that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert. Make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level and the rough terrain a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. 
A voice was saying, call out. And another said, what should I call out? All flesh is grass. All its loyalty is like the flowers of the field. The grass dries up and the flowers withers when the Lord's breath blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass dries up, the flower withers, but our God's word will exist forever. Go up on a high mountain, messenger Zion. Raise your voice and shout, messenger Jerusalem. Raise it, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord God coming with strength, with a triumphant arm, bringing his reward with him and his payment before him. Like a shepherd, God will tend the flock. He will gather lambs in his arms and lift them onto his lap. And he will gently guide the nursing ewes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. John, the baptizer, was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I am is coming after me. I am not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sometimes, maybe even often, the readings we hear in Advent don't seem very Christmassy, for lack of a better word. Our readings that we heard today from Isaiah chapter 40 and Mark chapter 1, which doesn't begin with the genealogy of Jesus or stories of shepherds or even pregnant Mary, let alone a baby in a manger, but instead this story of Jesus' cousin John crying out in the wilderness, calling people out to him and to be baptized, a baptism of repentance. Today's stories are all about meeting God in the wilderness. And while they may not seem very Christmassy, their connection to the baby in the manger may feel tenuous at best. They are, when we hear them in that light as stories about meeting God in the midst of the wilderness, really applicable to our world today. 2020, if nothing else, has been a year of wilderness wandering for so many in our country and in our world. Last week, I talked about how that book of Isaiah spanned a time in Israel's history that was a wilderness time, a time when they were invaded and occupied by foreign armies, drug off to foreign cities, and living in exile, longing to go home. In the midst of that long and painful time in Israel's life, the prophets spoke of their history to remind them of how God had behaved when they were in wilderness times in the past. The God who had rescued them from slavery in Egypt, the God who had led them out across the Red Sea, and the God who had been with them through 40 years of journeying through the wilderness to the promised land. 
This is our history too. And hearing it reminds us of who God has been and will be for us as well. God will come to us even in the wilderness, even in the desert seasons of our life. And we know because God has always come to God's people. Now, our instinct is to want out of the wilderness as fast as possible. And that's just human nature. The people of Israel wanted out of the desert and out of occupation. They even started grumbling at Moses during those long days trudging through the desert that it would have been better to stay slaves in Egypt than to endure this. Under the occupation of Israel and exile in Babylon, Israel cried out bitterly that God had abandoned them. We long for the painful existence of the wilderness to come to an end. And yet there are gifts that we can only learn to receive in the wilderness, I think like the gift of dependence, of knowing that our daily bread, our manna, comes only by God's grace, only if God sends it, not by our hard work, but from the utter goodness of God's heart. Like the gift of longing, the gift that teaches us to take joy in the simple things, like God's presence, in pillar of cloud and fire, in the quiet moments between the chaos, and to long for the things that we take for granted in the promised land times, things like homes and neighbors, like the gift of being reminded that we're not in control after all, but God is, and God will take care of us. Israel never loved those gifts of the wilderness either, but she learned each time she was thrust back into it, she learned that in the wilderness, God was there. God was always there, but in the conversations in the wilderness, God somehow became closer. And those conversations were deeper and so much more authentic than often the conversations in the good times were. The prophets and the poets poured out their hearts to God in the wilderness, in words that span the whole of human emotion. And that, it turns out, is great preparation to meet God, to be ready to meet God in the flesh in just a few weeks on Christmas Eve. This Advent season has been a rough one. It's been a rough one for my family. I know we're only, what, six, seven days into it. But this week, I broke down and wept. And I did it in front of my kids, which I don't do very often. And the next day, my 14-year-old on the phone with my parents said to them, almost with this tinge of awe in her voice, quietly, I'd never seen Lucy cry before, and she really cried. And as I saw her in that moment glance over at me, I realized in her look how important it was to her that I had cried, that I had really cried. Because in a strange, almost counterintuitive way, my tears were part of what helped her feel better because they validated her tears and her deep grief and roiling emotions. When I wept and then hugged her and told her it would be okay, not because it didn't hurt like hell, but because there was love and hope and we would get through it together. She knew I wasn't just saying feel good stuff to make her feel better in the moment. She knew that I was clinging to that hope too. And so my weeping somehow lessened her burden, made her feel better. Together, we made each other feel better. Maybe you're not feeling like you're in the wilderness this year. 
If that's the case, in a way, I'm very jealous of you, I'll be honest. But I also feel a little sorry for you. And I'd like to invite you to spend these Advent weeks allowing yourself to pay attention to the wilderness. Don't try to manufacture grief or negative feelings that aren't there. By any means, that's not necessary. But pay attention to the wilderness around you, to the grief of the world. We don't have to manufacture it. There's plenty to go around. And ignoring it is not the way to make it go away. Paradoxically, the way we conquer grief is by facing it head on, telling the truth about it, experiencing it. The power of the wilderness is temporary, but when we face it head on, we can deal with it together because we can feel not just the pain, but the gifts of the wilderness. Some of you are right there with me in the grip of the desert, of the desolation. You are feeling for yourself the grief, confusion, loneliness, and longing of the wilderness of the world. It is the hardest thing in the world. And I know some of you are feeling that this year. I invite you to, to face the wilderness journey, to know that it's not eternal, it cannot last forever, but that while we're in it, there are gifts for us here too. And we can embrace those gifts, painfully bittersweet though they may be, the gift of tears, the gift of love, even when it hurts, the gift of just enough strength to make it through today, the gift of those around you and your dependence on their grace and generosity, and most of all, the gift of God's presence, the God who has always met God's people in the hardest places and led them out, the God who comes to us in vulnerability, who weeps with us. The God whose strength and power are expressed, as Isaiah says, like the arms of a shepherd who scoops up a lamb into their lap. The God whose royalty and glory were revealed to dirty shepherds gathered around a feeding trough with a baby in it. God has not abandoned us in the wilderness. God is guiding us through the wilderness to the other side. And along the way, God is providing all that we need, manna and a pillar of fire to remind us that God is always there. So in this wilderness season, let your heart break for the brokenness of the world. Cry out your longing for God's goodness to come to you and to all people. Make straight the crooked places in your heart and in your world. Level out the bumpy ones as best you can. Clear out the brush that clutters your heart and prepare the way for the Lord. God is coming. God is on the move. God will meet us with the gifts that only God can bring. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You are encouraged to share your prayer concerns by typing a name or a few words in the comment box on YouTube or Facebook, or by saying the names aloud. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and perform your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray especially immigration for immigration activists and organizations, including Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, and all those seeking racial justice. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression and gather all people in your healing, healing embrace. We pray especially for those on our hearts whom we name now. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. In this holiday season, we pray especially for the families of all who have lost someone in the last year, including the families of Joyce Buskey and Donna Lurkey. Make the generous lives of all our saints on exa an example for all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Take a moment and creatively share a sign of peace with all who God brings to mind. Begin with the people in the room with you. Share the peace online in whatever way you are worshiping with us today. And share it with those that you meet this week. Christ's peace be with you. Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Beloved of God, go in Christ's peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen.